everybody, this is Dr. Lori. So there's one topic I think that we should talk about real briefly, and I actually have the definition sitting beside me, so if you see my eyeballs going back and forth, it's because I wanna make sure that I get it right. Um, and that topic is, what is an integrative pharmacist? And so if you Google integrative pharmacists, there are a few pharmacists out there that call themselves integrative pharmacists. And what actually does this mean? What is a designation for this? Um, where do we see this going? So first and foremost, you need a definition so you can understand what sets us apart and why we have that designation, why we use that title. So an integrative pharmacist is actually a traditionally trained pharmacist who either has an RPH, which is a registered pharmacist license, or a PharmD, which is a doctorate degree in pharmacy. So they're traditionally trained. On top of being traditionally trained, this pharmacist has gone the extra mile and now has become board certified in another practice. So in order to become board certified, they have taken programs maybe through the IFM or the A4M. Maybe they did a CCN training where they're a certified clinical nutritionist. There can be many places where these uh, pharmacists have gained their extra knowledge. But really, um, the definition, as I told you, I've got it in front of me, is this is a person who has graduated from an accredited pharmacy school. They've um, completed the additional training and complementary therapies, and they've been practicing these complementary therapies or this type of practice for at least a minimum of two to three years so that you know that this person really has been doing um, the practice outside of the setting. Maybe they're still practicing in a traditional setting as well, so they haven't really left traditional pharmacy practice. These pharmacists have a knowledge in some of the following topics. Maybe not all of them because we can't be experts in every field and we don't want to because we want to be really good at what we do. But these pharmacists have extra knowledge, especially will have extra knowledge in nutrition, first and foremost. So those people um, who call themselves an integrated pharmacist have to have a background in nutrition and have studied something somewhere along the line that gives them the extra um, nutrition knowledge on supplements, herbals, and all those kinds of um, alternative therapies, as you will. Also know medicinal foods. So uh, medicinal foods can also include, you know, like your protein powders. Um, you can really understand that we don't consider those drugs, but protein powders should be lumped in that category because a lot of them have very high vitamin content and mineral content and several of them have lots of amino acids and so it's really important that we know that people are on those things so maybe the pharmacist is very well versed in medicinal foods also they can be an expert in complementary detoxification strategies um, you're also going to see that a lot of these pharmacists will have additional certifications in health coaching Maybe even motivational interviewing is something that I know a lot of pharmacist friends do to where um, we can help teach the provider um, how to uh, interact with their patients more adequately so that you can have a better interview per se with that patient to get more information from them. And then also there's the compounding specialists. You've got people out there, pharmacists who own compounding pharmacies, um, and they are also very skilled in bioidentical hormones, um, pain management, and the likes, but in the complementary type of aspect of, of the treatment. So it's not the standard medicinal drugs with an RX per pharmaceutical company per se. Uh, the integrated pharmacist is also, as we are saying, an expert in the field of conventional therapy but they're also credentialed in some way, shape, or form. These people also um, are very good at helping you with drug-drug interactions, drug-herb interactions. They look for drug-supplement interactions, which can happen, and then are very, very well-versed in drug-nutrient depletions. So these are things that get ignored quite often. So those pharmacists will interact with the physicians and sort of act like a liaison between the patient and the physician to make sure that we get a really complete medication list from those patients 
that we can give back to the physician that you have, maybe that patient has, so that the physician understands that they do have a professional with a traditional background understanding these traditional medications, but also understanding that we have now become content experts on the natural medicine perspectives as well. So really gives um, uh, physicians in the traditional practice setting a level of confidence in the materials and um, the services that we are offering by doing this and becoming that liaison between the patient and the physician. This is really important for medication safety aspect as well because we are catching these things and I've done it. I found them as um, I've been doing my own practice and seeing clients and spending time looking at these interactions. I've caught them, I've reported them back to the physician that these are some interactions we're looking at and it you can become quite skilled in these areas. At the end of the day, an integrated pharmacist takes an oath. The oath is do no harm and we're going to hold the highest standards for safety efficacy of the therapies and also use evidence-based information to the highest regard. So we're going to look at all that information that's given to us, look at evidence-based medicine, but also realizing there's lots and lots and lots of literature out there to support the use of nutraceuticals, of herbals, supplements, medicinal foods, um, non-traditional therapies. Maybe we can recommend them to a chiropractor if they need those services. We can recommend them to a practitioner who does um, yoga. Um, so maybe a body mechanics type of program that we can recommend those patients to. Um, maybe acupuncture is something that the patient would benefit from. So we can find that. How about Reiki? Reiki, meditation, spiritual work mind body spiritual connection these are all things um, I find myself making recommendations for um, and helping patients achieve optimal health and wellness by getting them to those aspects of these different practices that really do have literature supporting how they are beneficial to achieving optimal health and wellness we look at the whole person so I would say the holistic approach really is looking at the whole person the patient as a whole getting really to the root cause of what is causing their ailment and then we can report this back and work with a traditional physician or we can work with an integrative physician um, hand in hand to where we can come up with a really good regimen for these patients to help them achieve their goals um, final thought Integrative pharmacists are about looking at health care. We're not looking at sick care of the patients. We want to take patients who are kind of at the end of the ropes, are tired of being put on more and more medications, and are looking for an alternative rather than just on their own quitting medications, which is really not safe, to finding a professional who's out there who can help them get through all the noise that's all over the internet and find somebody who's reputable who can help make sense of some of this information and put safety for themselves at the top of the list but also we want to make you feel better so integrative pharmacist that is in a nutshell um, what an integrative pharmacist does what it encompasses and come back again because I'll give you more information on this topic a little bit further in the future. So have a great day.